Hello guys, welcome to the Claywright Workshop. Today, guess what? We're going to make a dragon. Dragons are fascinating creatures, and it's the one animal that I can make, and nobody comes up and corrects me and tells me that I did it wrong, that I got the tongue on the wrong side or the eyelid wrong or something, because it's a fictitious creature. However, many cultures take the dragon very seriously. The original dragon, we think, the oldest records start out in the Hang Dai uh, Yellow Emperor about 2,500 years BC. So that's a pretty long time ago. It's been part of every culture. Now, here in front of us, I have a three piece dragon the head, the middle section, and the tail. So that's a fun one to make. Here, of course, is a larger one over here to my immediate left, and it has more detail. We won't be able to work quite that large today, and if we really had the time, and I wish we had more time together, we could do a hanging dragon. It's the same concept, as you can see. The head is pretty much the same every time, the head, the horn, the eyes, but this one, of course, would hang on a wall, and it has a nice big wings. Now, if you look up above me here, you'll see two dragon pots. Here's one not painted, good old white clay, and that's a larger one. And here's one that has been painted. It's about a medium size. They make great pots for plants that would go outside in the garden, etc. It's the same face that I'm going to show you today. We've just put it on a pot here. Okay. We'll get started because it's going to take me a little time to do this. And what I'm going to do, instead of a three-piece one, I'm going to do just the head, okay? So I'm going to move this midsection here, and I'm going to move the tail so we'll have a little more room to work. And I'm going to try to get a head done like you see here. Now, being the old ex-school teacher that I am, I'm going to mosey on over here to the blackboard. and. What we're going to do is, on step one, we're going to do a large carrot, okay? We'll start here at the bottom, and it's going to come up, and then I'm going to bend it. And it's nothing but a bent carrot, if you will, all right? That's step one, all right? There's where I'm headed first. I'm going to do your large bent carrot. Now, as usual, we're going to use good old white earthenware clay. Here's a 25-pound bag right here. Open it up, and as long as we keep it wrapped in plastic, it will stay pliable. It will stay palpable, okay? Now, this is 25 pounds. I'm going to cut, looks like I cut about a third of it. Wouldn't be bad. And I'm going to roll a coil. Might be a little bit big, actually. I'm going to roll a coil. Now, we're starting out square, and by rolling it and putting pressure on it, I've taken the corners off, and now I'm going to put more pressure on one end than the other, and it begins to get big on one end and small on the other, like an egg or a blind date, all right? Now, you can't really sense this, but I'm pulling my hands apart. I'm pulling like this. So, I'm stretching it out. And in just a skinny few moments here, probably less than a minute, I have the carrot that I drew on the board, all right? I make it dull and blunt on both ends like a Baptist sermon, just dull on both ends, okay? You can relate to that. Now, you see how big it is on this end? As small as on this end. I'm going to take this stick. It's got a dull point. I'm going to go right up the bottom and come through this and hollow it out, all right? And we call this stick, and it just goes up the bottom, we call this a proctology stick. It goes right up the bottom, and notice I'm rolling it, so I'm actually drilling in with this stick. And I'm trying to keep it centered. It pretty good. I can feel it there. Now, get a close-up there. You can see I'm right up the bottom. I'm going to push down on the stick, and what will happen is, by pressing the pressure down, I'm opening up. 
Now we use this technique a lot. The large cone that's simple enough to do. It came out pretty good actually. Now pull out the proctology stick and you can see my walls are about the thickness of a slice of white bread. Now I've prepared this board has a dowel in the middle and I'm going to stick this here. There's the dull and blunt end. Now if you notice on my dragon to the left here, he has a fins down the back. So does the one on the right. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull back on this circle. And there's where my fin will be later. Okay, well that's, that's pretty darn simple, wasn't it? Okay, now I'm, this is called a fettling knife and I have no idea why they've called it that. I call it politically correct. It has no point and no edge. So just to give you a feel of what we're doing, watch this. This is way cool. I like showing off. All right. Can this be any easier or any more fun? This is just great therapy. I have friends that are therapists and we mentioned clay therapy. I think it's just touching the clay kind of empowers you. All right. Now, as I've drawn on my sketch on the board, when I bend this over, watch what happens. Hopefully, I figured it just about right. Coming into the throat area here. There's the nose. Hey, this is, this is working pretty darn good. I can live with this. Okay. Now, in the whole world, there's only three ways that anybody ever sculpted anything in all of recorded history. We've done all of them already. Manipulative, where we, these were up and we bent it down. Now, if you'll notice, if you look to the right, this one, the nose is further down. You see the movement to it, and the nose is further down. The one to my left, the bigger one here, the nose is up. Now, gravity gets us all in the end. My wife told me that. So I want to start out with this level, but of course it will slowly drop down. Gravity gets us all in the end. So I'm going to start out here. I'm not going to start out where I want to be because I didn't marry the boss's daughter. I'm going to start out here knowing that when I work it, it's going to slowly come down. So I'm going to leave it slightly up. I'm trying to put pretty curves in it. I'm a sculptor. I'm interested in form. Now, you again notice on both of the other ones, because this is in the reptile family, I'm going to put the ridges on the stomach. And I'm going to use this just simple stick here. And I'm going to put ridges. Look how simple that is. This is so cool. A lot of times in my classes at my studio, people are expecting this is going to take a lot of talent or a lot of time. But you see how quickly, I haven't got a clock to look at here, but do you see how quickly we've done the ridges already? So now here's the nose, the ridges, the fin. I'm going to go back to the drawing board so we can kind of keep up with what we're doing. I'll switch over to another color here. We've done the primary shape, which is always the first thing you do. Now remember, if you looked at a lot of money and you counted it, you would say it was $127.38. So you start out with the primary numbers, and you go down to the secondaries, and you go down to the small change. So this was our primary shape. Already, we altered it by putting in the fins. Okay? We also have altered it by putting the ridges on the stomach. Gives it a little bit more of a round. Now we know where the stomach is. Now these are my primary and my secondary shapes. I'm moving into the next one. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go with the eye socket along here. Probably bring a little more of a jawbone, the little mandible if it were a human. And then we're going to break away with the nose socket along here probably bring a little more of a jawbone, the little mandible if it were a human. And then we're going to break away with the nostrils 
probably will add on that lower lip. It's working out pretty good. And once we get to this point, I'm going to do the eye sockets first. We'll come back and get the eyes in there and give it a little more detail, all right? Maybe even some scale. So we're going to move into these secondary shapes now. I've done the secondary shapes with the green tool. I did the primary shape there with the black tool. So here we go. Let's get those shapes in. Now this is easy enough. We know there's going to be two eyes. I'm going to use my thumb to lock in the eye socket. Now the next biggest shape left on my creature here are the big jaws. Now about the easiest thing to do on that, and I do this almost every week, is constants with sculptors. If I want two things the same size as I'll be doing several more times this evening, is two eyes, two cheeks, two nose. I roll a ball, I make it about twice too big. This is simple math, we keep it simple. I tear it in two, I now have two equal pieces without using a scale or any serious math. Now I'm gonna alter that shape. As I mentioned, I'm gonna ma manipulate it. Hard word for me to say, I've got dyslexia of the tongue here. Okay, roll a ball, throw it down, so it's flat on one side and curved on the other. It makes a nice cheek size. All right, do it some again. Roll a ball. That's easy enough. Like you roll it like you want to make a snowball and throw at a teacher. That's fun to do, right? Down so it's flat on the back side. Now we also know, for those of my loyal fans that have watched the previous shows, when you're putting two pieces of clay together, that's the additive method. I've shown you manipulative. Now this is the additive method. We score and slip. What we do here is we scratch the surface or score the surface. Then we wet it because later when water works with the clay, it'll make something called slip. Now bring it in here. And that worked out pretty good too. I'm getting lucky. There's a lot of luck involved. I have an idea in my head, but now I have to make it come out in my hands. And I work with hundreds of students every year, some of them in my studio, and I go out to schools and homeschoolers and scouts and whatever. And most creative people, they'll start telling me all of their ideas. Thank you for sharing. I'm not Oprah. You have to do this yourself. So you have to follow directions. Remember, everything is easy when you don't have to do it. So I have a lot of young white brain students who want to tell me all their ideas, you know, and I'll pull the rabbit out of the hat for them. Notice I scored and slipped. Now I'm a teacher. I'm teaching you to do it. It's more fun in doing it yourself. My younger brother used to tell me that the middle of a donut had air in it. If you ate the middle, you'd get air in your stomach and that would be bad. So I would always eat around the hole and he'd eat my donuts. He would eat my dessert for me. Don't let somebody eat your dessert for you. Do this yourself. Have fun with it. You don't make mistakes in art. You make creations. Don't compare your work to somebody else. Comparison is the thief of joy. Just enjoy doing it. See, there are my nice cheeks. Remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. And wrong is not a term that artists use. They think of things as being different, not as being right and wrong. So think of me as being different, <laughs> not as being right or wrong. All right, I've added the cheeks. I've added the eye sockets. Remember, I gotta keep the head up. I think they say that about racing or something. Keep the head up, okay. Now, the next biggest shape, remember, just like saying mathematical numbers, 127, I'm looking at what would be my next biggest shape, and I think it would be the nostrils, the way that I do this. So I'm gonna add the nostrils in now. Again, I'm gonna use just a very, very simple tool. This is just a pointed stick, and I'm gonna go in, there's one on both sides. There's one, there's two. <laughs> That's so much fun. He's <laughs> putting a stick up his nose. Okay. This is so much fun. I wish you guys could be here and feel the clay in your fingers. It's like gold. 
barefoot on the beach, you know, when you feel the cool sand on your toes. It's very, very tactile. One of the ways that people learn is the kinesthetic learner is by touching. And that's what I really enjoy in my classes when people start touching this and they feel it and they feel the power of it manipulating in their fingers. And I can change my mind, put the head up, put the head down. This isn't wrong, it's just different. It's kind of empowering. I've actually just made it a little longer then. Okay, I'm going to bring that jawline in a little better. This is working pretty good. I'm not displeased with it. <laughs> I promise the head won't. So I may have to cheat and put a, something in here to hold my head up temporarily. Different times of year, I do a lot of art shows, and when I do an outside show and the air and the sunlight will make it dry out too fast, and sometimes I do an inside show and the air conditioning is going and it dries very slow. So the dry factor on this clay getting stiff and pliable depend on how much uh, warm air or cool air is moving over it. Go back to the nose again. All righty. Now, according, I've done the primary shapes and the secondary shapes. I'm down to detail. Now, if I get you guys to swing over to this dragon here, it has a lot of secondary shapes. It has this big fin here. It has this movement here, which I saw in a dragon book and I liked it. And it's got a series of horns. Now, I don't know what our time and how manic I get here, but I'm going to try to put some of that detail to give our, uh, our dragon a little more detail here. Okay. Now, I've got those nostrils built up, holding that jaw up. You'll notice a really nice pattern on the dragon here. If I can get you to come in there, it's really, really did a good job on that. And the other dragon has good pattern too. I'm going to go ahead and just lay that out. You'll see it's a grid pattern. And again, just using a, a simple tool here, I'm going to just lay it out the way artists would call a quick sketch or thumbnail sketch or layout. It starts big at the bottom and gets smaller as it comes to the top. Now, later, I'll come back and get a little angular retentive. I think in weaving it's called warp and weft. Ones go left and right, one go up and down. So we're warping and wefting here. Okay, that's all it was to it. And later I'll go back and put a little individual attention to it. And I hope you guys can follow this. I'm going a little faster than I would like to, but we do have the clock to contend with here. Don't, that let, don't think they'll let me run over into someone else's uh, show. All right. That actually is not too bad either. Okay. I'm having good luck. Luck has a lot to do with it. Of course, Mark Twain said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Uh, maybe Maybe working hard here will make me get lucky. Okay. I now have textured the face. I use an alligator or snake, and I notice that the texture gets smaller as it goes down the face and bigger on other parts of the body. There's a lot of theories where the dragon came from. One of my favorite theories is, and this, everybody has one, was during the Crusades. I think they started at 1099. When these uh, European, French, and Germans, Englishmen, went over to the Middle East to fight the Holy Wars, uh, like men have done for centuries, when they came back home and they're telling their friends about the many adventures they had, they told about fighting this monster that they found over there that wasn't indigenous to England. And this monster was scaly and it chased fair maidens and they had their trusty rusty claymore swords and spears and they went out and they slayed this monster this this dragon oh you should have seen it you should have been there it was a big scary booger bear 
And they actually were talking about a real animal. They were talking about the um, alligators that they saw on the Nile. And nobody had seen alligators in England. So it grew every time they told the story. So I use alligators a lot when I'm doing this. Okay. Well, alligators don't have horns. The point is, I'm going to go with the ice and the horns kind of grew out of the story being told. But interestingly enough, I'm doing the horns now. I'm making a piece of clay. going to cut it in half. Interesting enough, Hang Dai, the emperor there, the yellow emperor in China, he had a snake on his shield, on his flag. And every time that he conquered another warlord or emperor, shogun, he would take their symbol and add it to his, uh, like a metal, stick it there to his uh, shield. So he started out with a snake. Somebody else had an eagle, so there came the talons, and somebody else had a bull, so there's where the horns came from. I love that theory. I don't know if it's true. It's story's 5,000 years old, so I can't ask anybody that was there. So here it is. See, I roll this, made two, cut them in half, and now I'm going to make this guy a series of horns. I'm going to be good old Hang Dai that's conquering all of my enemies, and every time I conquer, I'm going to take their symbols and put it onto my dragon. This is amazing, like these fish stories, they keep growing. So uh, a lot of our history. Now, what is the other quote that I like so much? The history of the vanquished is the propaganda of the victors. So whoever wins gets to write the history. So I'm going to write that I was very courageous and the animal that I killed was big and ferocious and was attacking a fair maiden. The poor dragon man got a lot of bad press. All right, there's one. Notice, hopefully, that I put a hole in first. It's called male-female joint here. Got a hole up. Put the water in. We know that water works like glue. And then I plug the positive into the negative. That way it's less likely to fall off. And I'm, this, these horns come up. These go back. And I found out I sell a lot of these, and I have to ship them. And they break less when they're going backward like that. All right? So there are the major set. Also, it's fatter at the base and thinner on the top. We also can do these curly cues or spiral. Every time that I do one, I do it a little bit different. Yeah, you know, this is just like my life and income tax. I make it up as I go along. All right, there's a set. Here's another set. Fat in the middle and skinny on both ends like a mustache, all right? So then when I tear it, I got two equal pieces, yata, yata, ta, 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 like legs, all right? Then I put the holes in here to the stick. I put the water. You got to remember to hang that there so I don't block your shot. Put that in. This is a pretty good looking dragon, okay? Makeshift turntable that I have here. Now, I'm going to do the eyes next. Most people, when doing sculpture, they over-relate to the eyes, make them too big, like other parts of the body that they're aware of. They make it too big. Here we go. You know this trick already. You guys are veterans. Take a ball of clay, tear it in two so I have two equal balls, roll them. Notice how my hands are working clockwise and counterclockwise, like a husband and wife working together in opposite directions at the same time. All right, I'm a happily married man. I learned that trick. All right, that makes a ball. It fits into the palm of your hand. See there? So that little palm right there. Put it right in the eye socket. See that worked? Put it in the eye socket. Now I got to get down to detail. The only other secondary thing I haven't made was the lower lip. That's where the attitude comes from. Same trick. Mustache. Roll it. Fat in the middle, skinny on both ends. Watch how this is going to change it and give it some expression. Water works like glue. I like this guy. Got some attitude. He'd be a southern dragon. He got the lip out. Your mama. Okay. <laughs> got some major attitude working. This is working good? This is working good. I like it. I think you hold that head up. Okay. Now I'm going to start to play with it just a little bit to give it some movement. Put a hitch in the giddy up. Now let's see. Where are we now? 
Okay, not too bad a shape. Notice I'm going to fix that hole that was in the chest there. Not too bad a shape. Okay, here we go. Back to the drawing board. Now we're down to the final shape. So I'm going to use my blue pen for the finals here. All right. The third thing we're going to do is we've done the uh, horns here. We saw the horns. Got two sets actually. There's our horns. We did the scales. Remember they radiated out. They started out bigger at the bottom and they got smaller as they worked their way up. Okay, we've got the eyes in here. There's the eye bulging over there. I'm going to play with the nostrils a little bit now and I'm going to play a little bit with the scales in the center. We got the lower lip working good. I'm going to add a fin on here so you'll see that fin right there. Okay, looking good. I'll add that fin, I'll add the nostrils, and maybe if we have the time, just a couple of teeth in there. Okay, here we go. The upper eyelid, we're going to need a close up here, is what gives it most of the personality. So I'm going to roll this. This is way cool. Tear it in the middle. Got two equal pieces. Throw it down so it's flat. This is bodacious important. All right. I'm going to have to do this face to me. Not luckily that the gift of dyslexia. I'm working upside down backwards. Oh man, that looks good. All right. I'll flip it out and show it you guys. Okay. That's an eyelid. Can you come in here and give me a close up on it? That adds so much person. I'm going to try to let y'all see this one. I put water down first, and now if I can get this, I just lay that upper eyelid on. Is that cool? Do you see that? Now, see that? If I bring it down, woo, he's angry. Here comes the lower eyelid. I, I wish I had more time and I could get into the detail, but we're down to just really the very subtle details now. You guys can take it from here. One of my favorite tools here. <laughs> Is it cool or what? Okay, guys, we've done the dragon. It's a 5,000 year old symbol. Uh, in some cultures, it's a good thing. In some cultures, it isn't. You can see the ones here on my desk, what they look like when they're later painted. You see the big guy here with the nice flared nostrils. You see them over here on these pots. I'll bring this down so y'all can get a, an idea of what it's like when you put it onto a pot. Now, I've shown you a lot of variety here today. I've shown it to you in pots. I've shown you the three-piece one. Whoa! I've shown you the wall-hanging one here. <laughs> so, I've shown you quite a bit of dragons today. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I'm going to go back and put some teeth on this now. I'll see you guys again next time. I got to work with this guy. Can't let him go unfinished. See you next time.